Hi, my name is Patrick Moore, and I found myself in the early 70s one of the founders of Greenpeace here in Vancouver. I spent the next 15 years working full-time for Greenpeace in the top committee. In the mid-70s, I decided to move from confrontation to trying to figure out what the solutions were, because after all, there's over 6 billion people that need food, energy, and material every day in this world. One of the main materials we use in our daily lives and in our civilization is plastic and vinyl is a very special form of plastic. Most plastics are made directly from oil and are basically 100 percent hydrocarbon, whereas vinyl is made from a combination of natural gas, it's also a fossil fuel, but the other half of it is salt. So it's, it's very unique. There's no other plastic that is made from a fossil fuel and a salt mixed together, and that's why it's called polyvinyl chloride, because the chlorine that is in salt becomes part of the vinyl polymer and is therefore a unique plastic that is capable of performing in ways that other plastics cannot. For, for example, it can be easily softened with plasticizers in order to make it very, very flexible and soft. Or it can be rigid as it is in pipe uh, and, and, and in uh, plastic packaging. The anti-vinyl activists have made a lot of crazy allegations about the effects of vinyl. For example, they say that chewable baby toys are going to cause health problems in infants. This has been completely rejected by the European Commission, full studies on vinyl, and even the Green Building Council of the United States, which is a, an activist-based group in many ways, has rejected the criticisms against vinyl. They say that the reason shower curtains smell the way they do is because of the chemicals coming from the vinyl and that's going to give you cancer. This is absolutely false. On the health side, vinyl is the most common plastic used in health care and medicine. That's what blood bags are made from, the gloves that doctors and nurses wear, the hats that they put on, the wall covering in the hospital rooms, the floor covering. They're made with vinyl because vinyl is easy to clean and maintain in an antiseptic way and also it's a very good barrier to germs and because it's flexible it can be used for vinyl tubing and blood bags and the like. Very important in medicine. On the environmental side, vinyl uses less energy than the other types of plastic in its manufacturing. And it certainly uses less fossil fuels because it's only half fossil fuel, unlike the other plastics, which are basically 100% fossil fuel. That means vinyl is more climate friendly than the other plastics. In other words, the global warming impact of vinyl is lower than it is with most of the other plastics. The activists claim that vinyl can't be recycled when it is just as recyclable as any of the other plastics. And as a matter of fact, nearly 100% of the scraps that are produced in the manufacture of vinyl are remixed back in and used. Not a lot of consumer vinyl is recycled. Guess why? It's all still in use. And so it's kind of unfair to charge the vinyl industry with not recycling its product when, because it is so durable, it's still on the sides of houses. It's still buried in the ground in pipes. It's still on the wire as insulation. It hasn't needed to be recycled because it's still in use because it is so durable. That is why there isn't a huge recycling of vinyl like there is with paper, for example, where obviously most paper is ready to be recycled within a very short time after it's been manufactured. Vinyl lasts for hundreds of years in the ground as a piece of pipe and therefore doesn't need to be recycled and doesn't need to be replaced, which is another good aspect because durability means less cost in maintenance and replacement. 